How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're going to be making this really interesting, very tranquil, nice um, landscape scene. It's very artistic. It's really fun. So we will get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with EV and Cycles. With over six years of experience, I have created an add-on currently containing 240 materials across 14 surface categories. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. You might be thinking, what about image textures? Image textures are easy to set up, but don't give you any control. Real-time materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. All right, so this is the project file here. If you actually wanna get the official project file, you can grab it on Patreon right now. That is linked in the description, but this is the scene we're making. It's really fun, it's really nice. It's just easy to look at and that's kind of the whole goal here. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get a new file going. So I'm gonna right click and select Blender and we're gonna get this going. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, get a plane. I'm gonna hit S8. So now we're here, let's go ahead and select that plane, hit tab, right click and subdivide that. And we'll go here to a hundred cuts right here in the lower hand. Now we have that, let's go ahead and create our stream for our water. But actually now let's, dis let's displace it first. So click on this, add modifier, and we'll go ahead and displace it. I do need to go ahead and hit control A and apply scale. We forgot to do that. All right, click new. Click the little texture button and I'm going to go to clouds, bring my depth to zero, my size all the way to two. All right. So like I said, let's make our stream of water and that's going to need to be done in weight painting. So I'm going to hit the tilde key, which is right above the tab key and click top. So now that we have that, I'm going to go here from object mode to weight paint, right click and let's go ahead and get that radius up. Cool. Something like this. And then we'll just go ahead and make our stream that might be too big yeah so let's go back and bring that radius down a little bit there we go so let's go and do this number it's really up to you and I wish there was smoothing like in like they have in Photoshop but or maybe they do have smoothing I don't know <laughs> I don't weight paint that much all right so let's go ahead and do it again something like this all right, nice, this is what we want. So what it's doing is it's assigning a vertex group to what you painted on top of. So if you go back to the displacement modifier, you can grab the group and then you invert it and then bring your mid-level down. You can actually give it negative one on the mid-level and that makes an even bigger cavus, crevice or cavern. I'm not, I'm, I don't know my words today, but this is what we want. And then what we can do is get another plane, hit S8 and then just bring it up a little bit. Look at that. We have water now, how cool is that? Easy. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get a camera. So shift A camera and then kind of position it where you want it to be. Control Alt Zero, snap it to view. Now click on your camera settings and we're gonna go to 35 millimeters. That's what we want for this. Now your composition is important because if you have it like this where you can see, you don't wanna see the end of this stream. So you wanna see these humps. Now you are gonna be able to make out the edge of our square, especially in the, not really especially, but in the final piece you can. Being that this is stylized and stylistic, it doesn't matter. I personally was fine with that edge, but if you don't like it, just go ahead and duplicate the plane farther down the scene. But really it's, it's not that noticeable in the final product, um, if that gives you any solace. All right, so we'll go here to mesh, icosphere, and then right here in the subdivisions, we'll just bring those subdivisions up. And then I'm gonna hit G and move this out to here. And then hit G and I'm gonna hit S to scale it up. Let's go ahead and set up our composition. So maybe bring my camera up a little bit and move my camera down. Nice, that's, that's kind of what we're looking for. Now let's go ahead and light this thing. 
So we're gonna be using cycles. So click on the camera icon right over here on your light paths. Just make everything one and turn off reflective and refractive caustics and you'll be pretty good to go with cycles. I'm gonna click on the render button, click on the world icon and we're gonna use the sky texture. So hit the little orange, I mean, sorry, the, the yellow dot, sky texture. Bring your sun intensity to zero, your air to zero and your sun elevation far down. You can actually see the sun, it's black, it's right there. Um, let me turn off the end panel. So yeah, bring that sun, um, sun elevation down and then rotate the sun till the sun is hitting your scene. So I'm gonna bring my strength of two and then bring that sun elevation up like this, there we go. And the point is to get some contrast over here and brightness over here to make it look really nice and satisfying. Your air, bring it to, ooh, your altitude, just slide it to the right a little bit till this starts becoming less of a noticeable line, just like that. So it looks like 1,800 for me, that makes this a much better, nicer looking line in your scene. All right, let's go ahead and save this. I made a couple of additions, so just name it whatever you want, which right here you can see I did name it whatever I wanted to. We're just gonna call this two. <laughs> All right, let's click on each object and add a material. So click on this object, new material, click on this object, which is the hills, new material, and click on this object, which is the water, new material. Bring that roughness all the way down and bring that transmission all the way up. Even though we don't have any light bounces, it's still gonna try to behave like it's transmissive, even though it's not. Um, those light bounces kind of destroyed that, but that's the point. Okay, now that we have this, let's head over to the shader editor and finish this up. So I'm gonna hit zero to my camera view, and I'm gonna hit the drop down, turn off that world opacity. So this object, actually let's work on this one. This is the easiest one. So shift A, search bump, plug that there. We'll get a noise texture. And OI, we'll go 3 to 4D, plug that into the height, make our, make our distance 0.1, and let's see how that looks in the scene. And then we'll just bring some of that roughness up and maybe some of that detail to make that water look bigger. And what's cool about the W is when we go to animate it, we'll be animating this water So you can add a little bit of ripples. So there we go, that's the water. Here on the, click on the, uh, the hills. I'm gonna hit the period key to get, get to this principle. Let's get another bump. Plug that into the normal. Let's get in a color ramp. And we'll get a wave texture. And we'll, if you have the node Wrangler add-on enabled, comes the blender by default, hit control T get that object coordinate, get the color into the factor and the color into the height. Cool. And then in this case, you can actually rotate, I think it's the Z, yeah. So you can actually, on the Z axis, rotate where these lines are going. And then I'm gonna go ahead and scale them up just a little bit. And then here, I'm gonna go to B spline on the color ramp and then crunch this in. And that's gonna give you this really nice ridge right there and then bring that strength down. So just bring it up a little bit till it's actually kind of bumping our whole environment and then bring your roughness down on the environment as well. Till it's however you like it. Or if you can have no roughness, just bring your roughness way up there. Either or, I prefer a little bit of glossiness because it makes the scene look really cool and interesting. All right, last one is the sphere. We're gonna click on the sphere here and we're gonna play with some emission. So let's get a color ramp here plug it into the emission. Let's get a gradient texture and control T on that, use the object coordinate and we'll get the color. So there we go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna go ahead and manually rotate the sphere by hitting R. You, if you hit R twice, you can free rotate it or just hit R once and rotate it on an axis. So I'm gonna just rotate it like this Let's go here from linear to B spline. That's gonna give you a much smoother transition with the gradient. And then with the X location, you can make it higher or lower. 
And then in this case, on the color of the color ramp, use the color picker and just highlight that. Boom. And then of course, with the submission strength, you can make it brighter. There we go. Now it's actually illuminating the scene. As you can see, it's pretty nice. It's a really nice effect. So now we have this whole scene lit. Really good. Let's go ahead and animate this and finish it up. So we're gonna be animating several components. We're gonna animate the emission strength on this. We're gonna animate the water rippling here. We're gonna animate the sky texture coming up like a sunrise. So it's gonna be really cool. Right over here, this is gonna be your timeline. I'm gonna just give myself a bunch more frames by hitting this and adding it more. So we're gonna kind of eyeball this. So very important, if you go to your edit preferences, click on the animation tab, make sure your default interpolation is set to Bezier, very important. All right, so with that being said, let's click on that sphere, bring that emission strength to nothing, and then go to the world and bring that sun elevation um, as far down until there's nothing happening. So it looks like about negative 5.44. Now what you can do is just click here and then I'm gonna go over to maybe frame 140 and bring that sun, oop, bring that sun up to about here. That's about as much as I want it to. And then if we press play, it animates in really slowly and very, very nicely. Maybe too slow. We'll go to frame 120. Now, right about here, I want the sphere to start coming in. So let's bring that sphere down. All right, and then we'll go to this little tab here. Looks like it's gonna be the Z. So click the Z, go to about here, and bring it up to where your desired location. Click that, so now, cool. Now this is just plug and play, edit the speed how you like, however you want it to do it. Now right about here, let's animate that emission strength. So right here in emission strength, plug it there, 163, maybe all the way to frame 200, and then bring that emission strength then maybe to three, but it's really up to you, click that. So now, there we go, animates in, just like that. And then right about here, the sun can go back down. So click this, go about that far, and then bring it all the way down till the sun is no longer affecting anything in the scene. So right about there, click that. So now let's see how, how that looks. Nice. And then once this is far down, we wanna have a scene, a moment where the whole scene is being just illuminated by the sphere. So right about here, and then animate the emission out, just like we did. So click that, go to the, go right, maybe right about here, emission strength of zero. And it slowly goes out and then frame 355, that's where it ends. So right here on the end, type in 355 or whatever number it ends for you. So now you can see it's a seamless, nice seamless loop. Last thing we need to do is animate the water. So click on the shading tab. I'm gonna go to the material preview so we can see everything right over here. You'll see the plus, just bring that up. Scroll wheel, go here to the timeline and we'll just animate the W of this noise texture. So right here, I'm gonna hover over and hit I, and I'm gonna go to the end, and I'm just gonna animate the water. I'm really gonna just kinda eyeball how long it might take hitting I again. So click on the noise texture. And if I press play, now I did make a major mistake, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete those keyframes. Go here to your preferences and go from Bezier to linear. We don't want it to be smooth when it starts out. All right, so let's do that again. Hover over the W, hit I, go to the end, and then well, it really doesn't matter how many, it's really up to the speed you want. So that's too fast. So we'll go back to the end and bring it back a little bit. Hit I again. That might look nice. Let's see how that looks in the final piece. Nope, too fast. So we'll go back to the end here. Maybe bring it down some more. 
hit I to overwrite that. That's way better. That looks a lot better. Okay, we're done. We're done with the scene. Very simple. If we press play, hopefully OBS isn't crashing. This comes in here, sphere comes up, light animates in, water's rippling around, and then it goes back down and we're done. So there you go, that's the animation. It's very simple, but it's very nice to look at. And let's go ahead and export it out. So click on this little printer icon, choose your resolution. I would recommend just using the default as a PNG sequence, just export it out so your scene doesn't crash. Make sure you make a folder first. Or if you just want Blender to compile a video for you, go from PNG to FFmpeg video, encoding to MP4, and then medium quality to perceptually lossless, render, render animation. So there you guys go. That's how you create that really nice piece. Um, it's really nice to look at. I'm very proud of the design. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching. Again, if you want to check out real-time materials, that is in the description, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.